Hey there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now something computers do often is sort things. They might sort lists of numbers, they might sort names. For example, if you go to a website to buy something, there's probably a button there to sort the items by price. Or if you go into Windows Explorer, you might want to sort your files by name and so on. There are lots of examples where we have things sorted for us all the time. Now there are lots of different algorithms that can be used for sorting uh, numbers and strings. And today I'm going to show you the simplest one to understand, which is called a bubble sort. Now it's not the most efficient, but it certainly is the easiest one to understand. So if you want to understand how to use bubble sort, please let me explain. Okay, the concept behind bubble sort is really, really easy. Basically, if you have a list of numbers, you go through the list one at a time and compare it with its neighbor to see if it is greater than or less than its neighbor, depending whether you're sorting kind of ascending or descending. And then if it is, you then swap it with that neighbor. And that has a result that the numbers kind of bubble their way up as they are compared one with another, they kind of bubble the way up until they reach their ceiling where they are no longer bigger than the one above it. And then you start again and you bubble up the other numbers. And the result is after several iterations, the list is actually sorted. Now the best way to actually see this in action is for us to use a real demo. So let's have a look at how we sort a list of numbers. Okay, so here is our list of numbers. We've got five, eight, one, four, and two, and clearly that's not in order. So the first step is to compare the first number and the second number, five and eight. Is five greater than eight? No, so we don't do anything. But in the next step, we now compare eight and one, the next pair. So is grade eight greater than one? Yes, it is. So they get swapped. So now the list is five, one, eight, four, two. And now you compare eight with four. Now the reason we're comparing eight and four is not because we're tracking eight specifically, it's because we are moving up the list and eight is moving up the list with us because it's bubbling up the list. So we compare eight and four. Is eight greater than four? Yes, it is. So we swap. And then last item on the list, we compare eight with two. Is eight greater than two? Yes, it is, so we swap. So that gives us, after our first iteration, five, one, four, two, eight. So we can see now that eight has bubbled its way up right up to the top of the list. But of course, the list isn't sorted yet, so we need to go around again. So starting with our list now for the second time around, it's five, one, four, two, eight. We compare five and one. Is five greater than one? Yes, it is, so we swap. Then we compare five with four, is five greater than four? Yes, it is, so we swap. And as you can see here, now five is bubbling its way up the list. Is five greater than two? Yes, it is, so we swap. And now at the end, is five greater than eight? Well, no, it's not. Eight has bubbled its way to the very top, so we don't do any swapping this time. And we end up with the list one, four, two, five, eight. So now five and eight have bubbled their way up the list, but there's still some uh, ordering that needs to happen a bit further down. So we go around again. And so now on the third iteration, we start with one, four, two, five, eight. Is one greater than four? No, it's not, so we don't do anything. Is four greater than two? Yes, it is, so we swap. And then we have the list now one, two, four, five, eight, which actually we know is actually the sorted list, but the algorithm continues. Is a five greater than eight? No, it's not. So at the end of the third iteration, we have one, two, four, five, eight. But at this point, the algorithm doesn't know if the list is actually sorted. So we go around one more time to see if anything else needs swapping. If nothing else needs swapping, then we know the list is in order. So for the final time round, we've got one, two, four, five, eight. One is greater than two, no. Is two greater than four, no. Is four greater than five, no. Is five greater than eight, no. And therefore there have been no swaps, so we know the list is sorted. One, two, four, five, eight. And there we have it, our list is sorted. Now this isn't the most efficient algorithm as I've mentioned before, but it does explain very quickly how a computer can sort a list of numbers. Now I am gonna cover the other algorithms in some future videos, but for now it's good to get your head around how this bubble sort mechanism works. Now let's quickly type in a Python program that performs a bubble sort so you can see how it works in an actual programming language. Okay, so here I am on a Raspberry Pi. I'm in a terminal. I'm just gonna start typing in a Python program. So let's start up nano and let's call it bubblesort.py. And the first thing we do is define our array of numbers. So five, eight, one, four, two. And the great thing about Python is that you can now just say print L. So let's very quickly run that and just see how it works, Python 
bubblesort.py and there's our list being printed out. Okay, so let's get in there now and actually write a function for doing this. So we say def bubble sort and we're gonna pass in a parameter which we're gonna call list. Now what we want to do is you know from what we just looked at, it, the way the, the algorithm knows if it has swapped, if the list is in order is whether it swaps something or not. So we need to have this variable that tells us whether something has been swapped. We start by setting it to true so that it always goes around this list for the first time. Then just for some formatting here, we're gonna print a blank, blank line and then we're gonna print new iteration. So you can see how it goes round every time. And then the first time you go around, we want to set swapped equal to false so that it only gets set to true if it actually happens. So swap becomes equal to false. And now we want to go through every item in the list so we can use a for loop for i in range. So this will produce a range of numbers and it will be the length of the list minus one because remember we're always testing the current one with the one in front of it. So of course you don't want to run over the end of the list there. And so in this we do this now we say if list i, that's the first item, is greater than list i plus one, that's the one next to it, then we want to swap it. Now the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna say print, just so that we know what's going on in the program. We're at slot, okay, and this is gonna be i, or index maybe better to say, index, and we're gonna say str i, produce i as a string, because you're concatenating the strings here, and then we're gonna say what we're doing, so we're gonna swap Okay, and we're gonna say what we're gonna swap. We're gonna swap list i, if I can type that properly, list i, okay, and we're gonna swap it with, um, so we're gonna say with, and then again we need another string and it's list i plus one. And that should be the end of the print statement. And then to actually do that, now I'm gonna do it the simplest way, the most obvious way, I'm gonna use a temporary variable. There are some cleverer ways of doing this, but I don't wanna make the program complicated to understand. So what we say is store the list i in a temporary variable. We now overwrite list i with list i plus one, that's its neighbor. And then what we say is we want list i plus one to be now equal to the temporary one. That's the one we've just stored. We certainly wanna say that we've swapped something. So now we say swapped is equal to true. So the, the loop will keep going round. And then for us now, we're gonna print out lists. So we see what happens. And then right at the very end here, we can say print nothing left to swap. So that tells us that we've got to the end of our list. And then we can print out the final list, print list. Okay, and that's it. That is the program. Remember here in Python that the uh, functions are defined by the white space. So this is the end of the function here. And now what we can say here is we can say, um, oh, and one more thing we want to do, sorry, of course, is uh, return uh, the list. Okay, in fact, we won't print it there. We'll print it on the return. So we return the list. And then here, of course, what we want to say is L is equal to bubble sort. Uh, L, and then we want to do a print of L. Okay, so there we have bubble sort function. I haven't, let's test this to see whether we made any typing mistakes. Let's save it and then try it and run it. Oh, it didn't work. So let me see, for I int should be the word in, of course. I've made a typing mistake there. For I in range. So there we go. Let's try typing it now. And we've got a mistake there for list is greater than missing a closing bracket. There we go, let's try that one then. And there we go, so it works. So we can see five, eight, one, two, four, the first iteration swap eight with one, eight with four, eight with two, and then you can follow this all the way down to the very end, the last iteration, the second but last iteration just swaps the four and the two exactly as we saw uh, a few moments ago when there was nothing left to swap. It means that there was no swapping occurred. It prints out the final list, which is one, two, four, five, eight. So sorry about the typing mistakes there, but there you go, a quick Python program. Let me just bring it up on the screen again for you. If you want to pause that, there it is. Okay, quick Python program for doing a bubble sort. And there you go, that's bubble sort. 
Well, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please, you know what I'm gonna ask you, please subscribe, please comment below, and please share this video on social media. Okay, well, that's about it. So I'll catch you in the next one.